At a time when naval communications constituted the basic means of trading and conquering foreign nations, the strategic position of Cyprus, being an island located at the crossroads of three continents, rendered it desirable to merchants and colonizers. Franks, Venetians, Turks and the British are but a few of the long list of conquerors of Cyprus through the ages. In their passage through the island, they left behind pieces of astounding architecture that are of historical significance. Such examples are the medieval castles that still stand, defiant of time, as a reminder of an era filled with mysticism, knighthood, love liaisons and mischief. In the spring of 1191, a part of Richard the Lionheart's fleet was wrecked on the shores of Limassol on its journey to Jerusalem for the Third Crusade. Richard the Lionheart, the then King of England, fought and overthrew the Byzantine tyrant Isaac Komnenos, leading to the end of the Byzantine era in Cyprus. Legend has it that prior to his departure from Cyprus, in order to continue his journey to Jerusalem, Richard the Lionheart married Princess Berengaria of Navarre at the castle of Limassol and crowned her Queen of England. Doubts exist about the accuracy of this information since it's widely supported that the castle was built some years later. In particular, it's said that Guy de Lusignan had the original castle built in 1193. Richard did not wish to permanently keep the island under his control. Thus, he seized all the treasures he could and sought to find buyers in order to sell his newly acquired property. The Knights Templar offered to buy the island from Richard at the price of 100,000 bezants, with a down payment of 40,000 and the rest to be paid from profits made on the island. The Castle of Colossi has been widely associated with the Knights Templar and the Knights of the Order of St. John. It initially served as the Grand Commandery of the Templars after their purchase of Cyprus from King Richard. After the fall of Acre in 1291, it was used for some years as the headquarters of the Knights of the Order of St. John of Jerusalem. The Knights of St. John, being connoisseurs of good wine, developed and mastered the production of Comandaria, a marvellous sweet wine of international fame produced only in Cyprus. Comandaria is today recognised as probably the oldest wine appellation. As L. von Suchen observed in 1336, Cypriots are the best and heaviest drinkers in the entire world. The Templars' cruelty towards the people of the island resulted in the Cypriots' revolt, forcing the knights to flee and cancel their deal with King Richard. His quest for a new buyer led to Guy de Lusignan, signalling the beginning of the Frankish domination in Cyprus that lasted for 300 years. During this period, an intensification of fortification construction took place, the northern area of the island was that which had always been geographically susceptible to invaders from the east, and since the island had fallen victim to numerous attacks from the Saracens, a great number of castles is to be found in the Kyrenia district and the mountain range of Pentadactylos. The significance of the castle of Kyrenia lies with the fact that it has three parts, each one exhibiting the principles of defense architecture of three consecutive eras. The initial structure emerged in the Byzantine era. It evolved during the Frankish rule and reached its completion under the Venetian era. In the 1960s, the castle was used as a laboratory for the reconstruction of the ship of Kyrenia, the shipwreck of which is considered today the oldest trading vessel ever to be found, dating back to the 4th century BC. The ship is exhibited there today, along with its cargo. One of the most impressive medieval castles in Cyprus is said to be that of St. Hilarion. It was built in the 11th century BC atop the mountain range of Pentadactylos 
at the breathtaking altitude of 725 meters above sea level. It took its name from Hilarion, a man famous for his miraculous medicine and exorcisms, who had chosen to live the last years of his life as a hermit in the Cypriot mountains. Legend has it that St. Hilarion Castle is linked, through underground passages, with the two other castles of the area, those of Cantara and Bufavento. Ensuring efficient defense from Arab raids meant that forts had to be maintained on the southern as well as the western shores of the island. In these areas are located the castles of Larnaca, Famagusta and Paphos. The current fort of Larnaca was built by the Turks in 1625. The original fort, according to historical sources, was built between 1382 and 1398. At that time, Larnaca had become the island's main port. During British rule, the fort functioned as a prison and barracks. The castle constitutes one of Larnaca's main attractions, and even though its peaceful appearance today does not recall its turbulent past, it invites you to reenact, using your imagination, an era of wars fought with cannon, and soldiers advancing towards battle on horseback. At a small distance from Larnaca, in the area of Kiti, you can visit the tower of the legendary Regina, the Ghost Queen, that all know, yet no one has ever seen. The woman that has enchanted the hearts and minds of Cypriots, without however anyone knowing who she really was. This tower is built on a hill, and from it you can see the plain and of course the sea, since it was built as a watchtower in order to protect the area from invaders from the sea. The old city of Famagusta is surrounded by walls dating back to medieval times. The massive walls, reaching a height of approximately 60 feet and a width of 30, still stand well preserved and unharmed by the centuries. The city walls were originally built by the Lusinians and were very high, nevertheless thin. After the Venetians captured the island from the Lusinians, they brought over specialists from Venice to fortify the walls against artillery fire, particularly to protect themselves from the Ottomans. Two of the original gates of the Famagusta walls still stand. Porta del Mare, the sea gate, and Ravayen, bastion, the land gate. One of the worth-mentioning structures of the walls is Othello's Tower. This tower is mentioned in one of Shakespeare's most popular plays, Othello. The main part of Paphos Castle as we know it today consists of a Frankish tower with a courtyard at the place where an older Byzantine tower used to stand. The castle was rebuilt by the Turks on the ruins of one built by the Lusinians. Standing on its rooftop, you can enjoy a magnificent view of the port and the sea, while you can watch one of the most beautiful sunsets on the island. Saranda Colones is another renowned castle of Paphos, belonging to the Byzantine era. Its name means 40 columns, and it acquired it because of the many pieces of granite columns that in earlier years dominated the area. The castle was destroyed by an earthquake in 1222 and was not rebuilt, but its remains are still a must-see attraction. Last but not least, the gates of Nicosia are a magnificent fortification structure constructed during the Venetian rule. They form part of a circular defense wall around the original city of Nicosia. Eleven heart-shaped bastions spread over a circumference of 4.5 kilometers 
regulated the entrance to the city through three gates, the Famagusta Gate, the Kyrenia Gate and the Paphos Gate. The walls, however, failed to stop the Ottomans from entering the city. Today, Famagusta Gate is a cultural centre with a blend of the medieval and urban characters of the busy capital, creating a picture that enchants the eye of the beholder. On the outskirts of Nicosia, you can also find the Fort of Aronas, a citadel built on top of the hill of Aronas, or, as it's also called, the Hill of the Lion. The fort was built by the Frankish king Jacques I in 1385 AD and was used as a watchtower vital to the defence of Nicosia. Most of these castles have inspired myth-making and legend-weaving surviving up to the present and still presenting unsolved riddles as to who they're referring to and what they were trying to communicate. One of the most popular legends, but simultaneously the most mysterious, is the one of the Rigena of Cyprus. She is a figure linked with many medieval buildings, idyllic sceneries, churches and treasures. As science progresses, enabling us more and more to trace the historical roots of the buildings that were supposedly hers, the mention of the Rigena becomes less and less frequent. She has, however, never stopped in her multifaceted existence to represent the very soul of Cyprus, Cyprus itself, and in this case, every single castle belonged and still belongs to her. <laughs>